Hi, I'm Richard Vague with Tycos. In recent weeks, we've discussed tariffs and the critical role of government investment in core R&D and manufacturing. Today, we're going to look again, which will be our last look at tariffs and trade for a bit, by turning our attention to an essential aspect often overlooked in these conversations advanced manufacturing itself and the significant opportunity it represents for the United States. Innovating breakthrough products is only part of the equation. If we develop a spectacular new product but don't manufacture some or most of its components in the United States after it is commercialized, then we will have won only half the battle. However, there's a real challenge we need to address. Our manufacturing prowess, good as it still is, has slipped in relation to advanced manufacturing in other parts of the world. For years, business leaders and policymakers concluded that there was little intellectual capital to be lost by offshoring manufacturing. You know, we would invent it here, that would be where the intellectual capital lay, and they would offshore the rote, repetitive manufacturing part, or at least that was the theory. Yet today, the complexity of products means that there is almost as much intellectual capital and intellectual property in the manufacturing process itself as in product development. Thus, for an increasing number of products developed in the U.S. but manufactured elsewhere, even without consideration of wage differences, there is simply not the option to reshore because the intellectual capital and manufacturing skills needed to manufacture it here have atrophied or been lost. We just don't have those chops in some product areas. For increasingly complex products such as high-end computing and telecommunications equipment, manufacturing is a form of intellectual capital unto itself. But there's hope. Advancement in automation, both actual and possible, now mean that the labor component of product cost is declining, and thus the significance of labor cost differences are disappearing. With that, reshoring has become increasingly cost feasible. These are jobs that have long since been lost to other countries because this manufacturing has been moved wholesale and it in its entirety to these other countries. Greater automation of this product process means that this manufacturing can now be moved back to the United States. The people hired to work in these now reshored plants will be net new jobs for the U.S., and they will be higher skilled, higher paying jobs, both the frontline jobs and more importantly, the engineering design and administrative jobs to run these reshored plants. Overall, U.S. job growth will accelerate. Since so much U.S. manufacturing knowledge has been lost, much of that prowess will have to be developed anew, which will take years and involve significant new manufacturing design, tooling, and training costs to create the more highly automated manufacturing design to make reshoring economically feasible. For example, a small electronics firm that I know has all its manufacturing done in China because it is two-thirds less expensive to do it there than in the U.S. That's assuming a U.S. manufacturer could even be found with the technical ability to handle this job. In fact, you know, if we're moving it out of China, the most likely places that this will end up would be places like Mexico or Turkey, Vietnam, and others not necessarily the U.S. for the very, very reason we've just described. However, this firm has now applied for a Small Business Innovation Research Grant, SBIR, sponsored by the NSF for the very purpose of creating a more automated and streamlined manufacturing process that could make reshoring possible. SBIR grants have been instrumental in providing small businesses the funding needed for R&D, since 1983, the program has provided nearly 200,000 grants to companies amounting to over $60 billion. If it receives that grant, it can afford the engineering changes 
They would both streamline the design, e.g. the use of fewer and less expensive materials, simpler or fewer parts, and greater automation in product assembly. This company couldn't afford to engineer these design changes otherwise. That's all better than nothing, all this SBIR money, but it is still peanuts when compared to the value it creates and the opportunity out there to be seized by the U.S. SBIR budgets aren't nearly large enough to accomplish this reshoring revolution. Increased government support will be required, but I'm undoubtedly being too hopeful here. In reality, we'll do well if what we have now survives Doge. Here's another example, a breathtaking example of truly 21st century manufacturing. At the University of Pennsylvania, scientist Carl June and his team of researchers have pioneered what is effectively a cure for certain types of cancer, including acute lymphoblastic leukemia. The procedure for this treatment involves taking out a select number of a patient's T cells and then genetically re-engineering and reprogramming the DNA in those cells to attack and destroy the cancer tumors. In most cases, once these modified cells are reintroduced into the patient's body, that patient becomes cancer-free in a matter of days as these T cells are targeted to kill that specific cancer. It's an almost miraculous result. The process for genetically re-engineering those cells is quite simply a manufacturing prof process, complete with an assembly line, albeit one that operates at a temperature of near absolute zero, manufacturing facilities staffed with well-paid technicians and scientists have been built in Pennsylvania and other places nearby specifically for this pur purpose. If Pennsylvania continues to invest in this type of genetic engineering research, it can reclaim the preeminent role in manufacturing that it held over a century ago, led by the most cutting edge manufacturing in the world. We won't need this type of manufacturing to remain on our shores. It'll result in many new high wage US jobs. And it's part of what could be a resurgence in manufacturing in the US. And by the way, there's evidence that that's already happening to a certain extent. Spending on manufacturing in the U.S. has increased markedly over the last few years, as is shown in this chart. So let's help tackle the trade problem the right way, the powerful way, by increasing America's investment in core and basic research and development and investment in the manufacturing skills to build innovative new products here. That's it for this week. Thanks.